So today I'm going to look at this thing. Now I showed this previously in a mailbag many months ago. I, mean, I did some basic testing on it to prove it did kind of work. It's got decade capacitance, right? So it is indeed 10 steps on each one. And this thing does basically one microfarad to 100 microfarad in these. And it also does, whatever that is, 0 0.001 to 1 microfarad on these. That's point microfarad. These are interesting terminals. They're not actually four millimeter banana jacks. I'm not quite sure what size they are. I haven't figured that part out yet, but they're not four millimeter, which is a shame because you can't just like get leads and plug them in. Now, I did actually find a problem with this at the time, and I might have accidentally fixed it because I was tinkering with it, and I think I might have fixed it before I actually meant to. So, and let's shove it into some terminals. So let's shove it in there like that. That's 40 microfarad. It's not showing up. Can't do it. 30. Or maybe it's the way I'm holding it. There we go. 10. 10 microfarad? No. This thing can't read them. <laughs> there you go. 4 microfarad. You can read that one. But it's way off. Um, 3. 2. 1. Is alright. But this isn't great for that, I think. So I'm just trying to measure these capacitors, but it's really awkward because I don't have the right plugs. So I'm kind of just messing around trying to find a solution that will work. I do know I have measured these before. I've actually done it. But I'm just trying to remember exactly how I managed to actually measure them. Need to be just right, otherwise you can't get a connection. There you go. I've got a connection on that one there. 20 microfarad. There we go. That one's working. But I remember when I was going through these testing these before, I couldn't get the 10 microfarad to work. It always just showed us as being a short or something like that. I could, I could never get it to actually register. I really need to get the right plugs for this, some kind of plug which I can just plug in and then use. This is really not a good situation. But originally when I got this thing, I did manage to get measurements of all of these connections. I just wish I remember exactly how I did it in a nice stable way. I did find the 10 wasn't working. It was basically showing as a short. Anyway, what I did before when I was looking at this, and I found that the 10 was basically shorting out. I did actually have a sneak peek inside and I think I found what was wrong with it at the time. So I may have half fixed it already, but I'm going to show you. So let's turn it upside down. So it's facing back there. Got these two screws here you've got to take out. There's the panel, which as you can see is extremely badly dented. <laughs> and curved and yeah, it's just like a mess. That really is straightening out, it's been dropped. Now, when I got this thing in the packaging, it wasn't packaged that well. Now, there was some debate about whether it was repackaged or not. I did get a partial discount from the seller in the end, because I did make a claim and said, look, it's here, it's been damaged. I would like a partial discount because of the fact that it's been damaged in post, right? And they did come to the party and they did give me a discount, so I did get some money back. But you see, like here, I've got these squared posts. That's these. These two posts just here. They've been pushed into this because it's just sitting on the bottom panel and it's just squashed everything in. And that relates to what I found. So these are the actual capacitors in here, and these are the connections to go to the front panel connections all the way along. All right, so these basically bus systems. And because the, back, the panel has been squashed down, it's pushed onto these. So this one here is basically touching the one beneath it. Just about. This one here is touching the one beneath it. Now this one here is actually the 10, which is giving the problems before. So this bus here, if I push it, can you see the one beneath it moving? Maybe you can if I get the anchor on it right. So just there, if I push that. See it's touching the other one. So the casing's been pushed in, it's pushed this rail, this connection into the one beneath it, and that's shorting it out. So those are the pair for the 10. This two here, kind of, I don't know, still feels quite solid, but I think that has been bent slightly. It is potentially touching just there. Um, this one seems okay. That one seems okay. But this one is touching. So if I actually bend this back up again, that will fix that problem. And that's what I found before when I was trying to measure it. The 10 wouldn't work, it shows a short. And I pulled the cover off, and I saw these are touching. I thought, right, that's what the problem is. And you can still see the bits of polystyrene floating around from the packaging. Which, you know, kind of needs to go, really. <laughs> 
It's basically a box full of big capacitors with these big bus rails joining everything together. But uh, yeah, these are the side panels which I need to kind of see if I can replace. But everything's mounted against these side panels, so anything I do to try and get these machined and get a new panel made has to be fairly precise to make sure everything fits correctly. I've got to make sure the holes are in the right places and that sort of stuff. Not impossible, this takes a lot of care. But it looks like most of the job on this is just to make sure that things like this get pushed apart again, you know, separate them again, unbend it, straighten out the bottom panel. And that will probably be good as new, well, almost, apart from the broken panels. So I've just been going around just trying to bend everything back up again, make sure nothing's touching against each other. Like these shouldn't be touching together, shouldn't be touching against these straps. It's just because everything's been pushed inwards when it's, it's been hit against the bottom panel. So I'm just trying to make sure that there's nothing touching these metal straps to hold anything together, because otherwise I'd be effectively shorting it out. There's gaps over there, there's gaps there. Make sure these don't touch together, those aren't touching together. Um, I think we're just about there. If they put spaces in things in the very first place, it wouldn't have been a problem, but there's no spaces relied on having things rigid and sitting nicely. Those are looking fine because they're clear enough of it. So I reckon that's probably going to be right now. I think I should try measuring capacitance again. So it's measuring the capacitance from the inside because then we're definitely going to get good connections. All I've got to worry about then is whether these sockets we need sorting out in some way. So we'll do this one first, which is the 40. There we go, 40.1, it's measuring it. Then we'll do this one here. That's 30, yep. Yeah. 20, yep. Yeah. 10, which is the one we had the real issue. That's perfect. So we've got four, which is good. Three, two is there, yep. Yeah. And one is here, which is a bit tricky. There and maybe there. Can you get to it? That one? There we go, there's the one. So they're all working fine. No more shorts, at least until I put the bottom cover back on again, which obviously I need to strain out. I'm not going to do that in video because it's going to make her a racket, smacking it with a hammer and that sort of stuff and trying to get it flat. I've done that plenty of times. I've shown it in videos before doing that kind of panel bitting work. You just need a couple of hammers and a nice flat surface and just, just work at it gently and, and just take your time with it. You can get those sorts of dents back out and get them almost flat again. If you put enough time into it, you can do quite a good job. So we also have the front panel outputs on here as well. We'll look at those. So we've got these connections, which is one and two. There you go. I don't know if I had 200, 300, 400, five. Yep, those are working good. Now this knob here is actually bent. You can see it on camera, not, but it's actually bent where it's been hit. I don't know if I can fix that. It is part of the chassis mounting. If I can straighten the chassis up, it might be right. But the shaft isn't bent. It's the mounting the shaft is on is bent. And there's a chance that I could damage it further by trying to straighten it. But we'll see. So it's 10, 20. Just making sure they're all working. 90, yep, that's all those. So 1.5, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 9. Yep, all the switch positions are working nicely. And then we've got this dial, which means I can actually wind up and down with this. Alright, so that's the lowest point there. So there's a zero there, and I can wind it up from that one, which is a, obviously just an air capacitor. And yeah, this goes round and round and round, so maximum is 11. So there is a slight bit of, I don't know, stray capacitance, I suppose. It could be the leaves themselves. Yeah, so it must that's me holding it. So I've relative that. Put it back in again. Do much lower. Anyway, it's working. So it's just probably because that bottom casing has been stoved in, and I need to fix that before and put it back together. I do want to fix these side panels. This is really bugging me. That's been broken off and damaged. Like I said, I do want to get some panels made for these. And if I do, I'll probably do a second part of the video, maybe add it onto this. I'm not quite sure how I'll do that yet. But uh, we'll see how that goes. So a bit further on this thing, those little sockets on the front where you've got the decades of each capacitance value, 
they're actually jumper sockets. So they're not actually something you plug a, a lead into to connect those values. They're actually jumpers. So what you actually need to do is put a shorting plug in there, which is one of these things, which I found online, which are close enough. They're not perfect, but they do the job. That then jumps the value onto the main rail. So it's got like an internal bus. And when you plug a short into those individual ports along the front, it adds it onto the bus. So that's how you get the decades, by plugging these little jumpers in. Now, fortunately, they aren't there, obviously. But that's what I figured out it to be. So if you plug into the left-hand side of the unit with the meter, and then you short those terminals on the front, the actual sockets, you get the value which is supposed to be there. So that's how that works. I'll demonstrate that at the end of the video. I found these things on AliExpress. These are 5.5 millimeter plugs. They do lots of different sizes actually. I showed these in my bag recently. Probably the last mail bag actually. If you want to go and find these, they do lots of different sizes. They do like two millimeters, three, four, five, five point five, six, and so on. So if you've got a weird size, you need to get one for. They actually have them. I was quite surprised. Anyway, the only problem with these is they're a bit short. So what I've been doing is I've just been soldering a wire on because these are actually plugs. All right, so I'm soldering a wire onto the inside of them, and then I can use this as a handle. So I can just push it in and then unplug it with the wire. If the sleeving comes off the wire, I'm not too worried, I'll probably just like loop it around and solder it up and put some heat shrink on it or something like that to, to make it robust again, but um, I'm not really too worried about it. I don't think it's going to get much use, but I need to have one of these for each socket on the unit. So I could do any one of those, or any combination, or all of them. So I need to make a bunch of these up. So that's what I'm doing right now. I thought I'd just show it. It's going to be noisy because of the fan and stuff like that, but basically what I'm doing is getting this, stripping some of this off. This is aluminium wire, which doesn't help. A bit harder to solder. It does solder, but it's not as good. Do the wire first, and I'll do the socket. Put a bit of the fluxy one on there first, and I'll do the other one. Almost out of this stuff. But mate, I was thinking I was, I'd be good to get rid of this particular solder because it's chunky. I've got no, no real use for it. But I'm doing things like this. It's actually really good. Otherwise, I've got this really fine one which you know, obviously works, but this is like silver solder stuff, it's better quality and expensive. So, you know, I've got this one too, but... So, because this is aluminium wire, it doesn't like to wet too well, so I'm just giving it quite a bit of heat on this, trying to melt this in. This is actually a silicon wire as well, so that's why the insulation isn't melting, because it's silicon. Which is good because I'm running 450 degrees C to solder that. <laughs> then I've got to do this as well, which I'm going to use this one for. I really need to get a better extractor fan. Actually, I should put on my list of things to buy. I need to uh, get a better extractor system. When I built this one, it's worked fine, but it's not capturing all the smoke and stuff. It's not wonderful. It's better than not having one at all. But um, I really need to buy a proper one for this, really. Plenty of solder in there, that's all nice and hot. Get it up again. Stick that down the side, stick it to one side. Now my fingers are getting a bit hot, but I need to let it go soon. Right, there we go. It's holding on. That's basically what I'm doing, it's doing a bunch of those. It's not ideal. Ideally, I'll get the right size plug and you know a decent I don't know, handle part on it, so I wouldn't have to do this kind of bodge. But this will do the job. It's not going to get a lot of use. So I thought I'd better demonstrate this, make a little bit more sense. So here's all these little adapters I made up. I needed eight of them. It's like a binary format. Or is it more of a BCD format? Got the meter hooked up. I've relatived out already. I'm using a Pomona cable here, high quality cable. Now one interesting thing with this is this isn't quite showing zero. You see I've got it below zero, that's the lowest point on this unit. So I'm actually tempted to see if I can adjust this to bring this scale around. So zero is actually the lowest capacitance because it's actually slightly below zero. I don't know if that's possible. So what is showing you these work, you know, I can pop that around and we get, oh, the ranging, of course, the ranging, the ranging. Take the mode back off again. Oh, I'll sleep on auto range. So in order range, we'll leave the relative ignored, right? So we've got a ambient reading of 55 or 550 picofarad. So, you know, that's what we get. So we want to show you these work, all right? So these step up in hundreds, just fine. 
But these are bits we're looking at. So these are little plugs I made. I'll plug that in here. That gives one microfarad. If I plug the two in, it gives us three. If I plug the three in, it should give us six. Plug the four in, that gives us ten. It's basically a BCD system rather than a binary system. And if I want to do ten, yeah, there's twenty on there, let's take these ones out. You can't have them all in, doesn't really matter. But that's basically what they're doing. These are just basically holders, I suppose, really. They, I think they basically short the capacitors out inside. Yeah, so we've got 10 microfarad there. Yeah, do 20. Plug that in there, it's got 30 now. Add another 30 on. So you can do any combination you want. There you go, and there's that one. Alright, so if I take the 10 off. Now I think the 40 was slightly high. Was it the 30? Maybe it's the 30. 30 is looking slightly high, and that's doing 40.1. So it's a bit hard to tell which one it actually is, which is causing that deviation. Could be a bit of both. Maybe you have to stick the LCR meter on this one. But you know, so if you want any combination, say if you want 41, yeah, it's 41. <laughs> um, so that's how you do it. So you just basically plug into the port you want to get the value from. So. This is, I think, accurate enough for me to use for doing calibration checks on multimeters. Like, I've used my standard capacitors in the past, and I've done multimeter reviews. I've got those little, quite expensive standard capacitors. This is why I wanted to get something like this as well, although it's massive. They're reliable standard capacitors. It's got a known value, well, known-ish. I'll have to determine it over time, but I think these two might be slightly high. All these other ones seem to be pretty good. All right. um, yeah, so it's definitely good. And we can also go in backwards if you really want to. Go the other way. So 0 0.9, but um, this jumper here, this little jumper pack, bridge. If you disconnect that bridge, I think that's actually disconnecting these. So let's have a look at that. Yeah, so that jumper bridge there, that disconnects these ones here, which gives a little bit less floating capacitance, I suppose. But most of that is probably from this cable here, to be honest. So it does give it a little bit more. So you're not getting much actual stray capacitance from this whole assembly here, which is pretty good. Interesting piece of gear. I'm going to stick this on my calibration stack, I think. If my calibration stack can take the weight, it's so heavy. But I think before I did it, actually, I want to see if I can do something with this, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to. Might be a bit tricky. Yeah, my stack of calibration gear is on top of a wooden filing cabinet. And I'm a bit worried about the weight. <laughs> it's getting pretty heavy. There's probably... Um, already probably 70 kilos of gear sitting on that thing so if you check out the other videos down below there at the end of the video and also down in the video description subscribe if you're not already subscribed there's a little link this there hopefully and there's also a patreon support link over there which helps you to buy a bit of test gear like this to play around with and to make videos about catch you later